computer vision breakthrough, full color e-paper displays, text to audio AI model, and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Researchers from Cornell University have developed a way to interact with computers using silent speech. Dubbed echo speech, it involves a pair of glasses modified with various acoustic sensors, so when the users mouth certain words, the lip movements can be used for custom commands in applications, like play, pause, volume up, volume down, etc. Lead researcher Rui Dong Zhang explains, For people who cannot vocalise sound, this silent speech technology could be an excellent input for a voice synthesizer. It could give patients their voices back. Outside of helping people with vocal difficulties, I could imagine this being another interesting interfacing option for virtual reality. You wouldn't even need complex voice recognition systems, as it would work whether you vocalised the sound or just mouthed it silently. E-Ink The original creators of e-paper technology have announced the new Spectra 6 full-colour displays, which they say rivals the saturation and vividness of printed paper. The displays contain up to 200 pixels per inch, and are designed primarily for signage inside stores, basically replacing regular paper signs. The modules are planned for release in 2024, and e-ink will be showcasing these displays at various upcoming electronics conventions over the coming weeks. A collaboration between the University of Technology Sydney and the Australian Army have been exploring new ways to increase the effectiveness of so-called dry brain-computer interfaces. They found graphene sensors have an almost comparable interfacing ability compared to invasive surgical implants. The hexagon pattern sensors are positioned over the back of the scalp to detect brain waves from the visual cortex. The sensors are resilient to harsh conditions, so they can be used in extreme operating environments. The user wears a head-mounted augmented reality lens which displays white flickering squares. By concentrating on a particular square, the brain waves of the operator are picked up by the biosensor and a decoder translates the signal into commands. Satellite-based communications on smartphones is another area that continues to develop, and now New Zealand telecoms company 1NZ have announced a new collaboration with SpaceX to provide 100% mobile coverage across the entire country using the Starlink satellite constellation. When the service goes live, there will be 100% coverage across the country, whether you're out on your boat, climbing a mountain, fixing a remote road, or on your farm. New Zealanders and New Zealand businesses are safer with us. The technology will initially be for text and MMS, but will be extended to voice and data, with SpaceX's next-generation satellites, which will provide the infrastructure going into orbit in late 2024. Self-driving truck company Aurora recently announced that it has now implemented all the features necessary to begin fully autonomous freight services between Dallas and Houston in a project they are calling Aurora Horizon. The company claims its truck will be able to operate at level 4 autonomy and they plan to commercially launch next year. Moving on to AI, researchers at Meta have unveiled Segment Anything model, or SAM, which some are calling a GPT-3 moment for computer vision. This model can seemingly distinguish different objects in any image or video, allowing for a wide range of segmentation tasks without the need for additional training. What's particularly interesting here is how it can be added to augmented reality applications so users can identify and potentially manipulate the perception of real-world objects in real-time, Black Mirror style. The company set up a website with a live demo that you can try, along with examples and a link to the paper. In other news, YouTuber Candlesan uploaded a very interesting video the other day, exploring whether GPT-4 was capable of programming a game completely on its own. He settled for a Flappy Bird clone in Unity and began work. The one rule for his experiment was that he could only copy and paste what the AI model gave him and not write any code himself. While he successfully made the game, Candlesan says that currently only those with programming knowledge could do this as he was able to steer the model in specific ways when solving different problems, but he adds he doesn't think it'll be long before anyone will be able to make games from scratch. A team at the University of Surrey have created Audio LDM, which is a generative AI model that creates music, speech and sound effects with text inputs. The team says the system can process prompts and deliver clips using less computational power than current AI systems without compromising sound quality or the user's ability to manipulate clips. There is a demonstration website with lots more information and audio samples generated by the system. 
The generic human voices are quite fascinating, if not a bit unsettling. There's something strange about them. Defence drone specialists in situ have announced an add-on to their integrator surveillance drones with a vertical takeoff system, so instead of needing a catapult to launch it into the air, a giant quadcopter attachment now lifts the whole thing up and drops the drone into motion. This allows these type of drones to be used in much tighter spaces, and in their demonstration video they showed it being launched from a US Navy vessel. In other news, drone delivery company Matanet was recently granted a waiver by the FAA to allow one pilot to control 20 drones at a time. This will allow the drones to be flown beyond visual line of sight, though for this test they must stay within Matanet's test site in California. I think before all delivery drones eventually become fully autonomous, we're going to be seeing more tests and experiments like this, and if you haven't checked out Matanet before, their drone stations look pretty unique when compared to the competition. Irish company Manor also recently announced that its drone delivery service will be coming to the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas suburb soon, though no specific date has been set. The plan involves a partnership with real estate developer Hillwood, and once FAA approval goes through, they will deliver meals, drinks and small packages to the 10,000 people living near the metro area. Continuing with drone deliveries, Zipline will begin a new home delivery service to bring prescriptions to hundreds of thousands of patients around Washtenaw County, Michigan, beginning in 2024. Zipline's home delivery service can deliver to areas as small as a patio table, is expected to deliver up to seven times as fast as traditional automobile delivery, completing 10-mile deliveries in about 10 minutes. New Eyes have announced their New Loops augmented reality glasses for medical and dental markets. The glasses have live 3D stereoscopic imaging for depth perception, continuous magnification from 1 times to 10 times, and high resolution depth sensors for augmented reality overlays. The dual 48 megapixel cameras allow surgeons to see with sub millimeter accuracy. Sony have also introduced the ELFSR 227 inch 4K spatial reality display. This thing allows for realistic, three-dimensional content without the need for special glasses or VR headsets. It comes with a high-speed vision sensor, which tracks the user's head position and where they're looking, so the image automatically changes perspective when they move, giving the illusion of depth. Almost like a hologram, but not quite. Sony are marketing this to industrial designers, architecture firms, engineers and game developers, amongst others. Saw this cool little trick on Hackaday and thought it worth a share. User Christoph has put together a little key CAD tutorial showing you how to put labels on copper pads instead of using silk screen, though I bet it works for other EDAs too. Not much else to say, but could be useful if you're designing a PCB and don't have much space for regular labels. Researchers at Swansea University have developed a low-cost carbon ink formulation which could facilitate the manufacturing of perovskite solar cells at scale. The team searched for an alternative to the gold electrode that is typically applied using an expensive and slow evaporation process after the device has been printed. The new carbon electrode performs as well as gold and can be printed using slot die coating in a roll-to-roll -roll process. So for the first time, perovskite photovoltaics are now fully printable in a streamlined process. The next steps for the team include adding more layers to the rolls in order to further increase efficiency with a view to using and testing them on roofs. And ending this week's video with a couple recent examples of 3D printing being used to help sick and injured children. Firstly, local news WWL-TV in New Orleans covered how a high schooler got into an ATV accident, seriously breaking her arm. But instead of using a regular cast, they decided to use a service by Active Armour in what is said to be a first for Louisiana. The doctors at the Children's Hospital in New Orleans scanned her arm using a smartphone app and received a custom 3D printed cast the next day. Looking on Active Armour's website, they say they have a bunch of different manufacturing methods for these and each specific cast can be modified for the patient with options for antibacterial coatings and the ability to remove them with one hand. Stratasys also uploaded a video of how Barcelona Children's Hospital is using their J5 Medijet 3D printers to both advance scientific research and create realistic anatomical models of patients for pre-surgery planning. 
The aim is to reduce the potential risks of complex surgeries by allowing surgeons to test out strategies for tackling challenging procedures and this has led to a reduction in surgery durations, sometimes by up to 40%. The hospital has its own dedicated 3D unit where radiologists, surgeons and engineers work together to create completely custom prints with multiple materials to suit every individual patient. Nice. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.